service today in Jesus name. Amen. Our text for today is found in 1 John chapter 3 verse 18. It reads, little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. That's the English standard version of that verse. Now, get, bring us up to speed. Somebody might have missed something, uh, whatever, but uh, in, in the month of January, uh, we specifically uh, preached a title, uh, a series titled, Into the New Year. And we preached uh, certain subjects like uh, the first one was let go to go forward. Second one was don't get stuck in life's passageways. And then the next one, God's already been where you're going. And uh, then God has a wonderful blueprint for your life. And last week we preached yesterday's faithfulness guarantees tomorrow's courage. In other words, God's faithfulness last year and prior to today guarantees us to have courage going forward. And this week I'm starting a new series on love is more than just talk. Love is more than just talk. And today I want to focus our attention on the subject of love or death. Which will you choose, love or death? Now we're continuing to enjoy God's continued attitude of blessing his people. And we must remember that it's all by grace that we exist to enjoy his blessings. And because God continues to choose to, to bless us, we must be moved to continue to be obligated to thank God continually. God can at any given time discontinue blessing us with life and all of its benefits without checking to see if we are okay with his decision. So today we're focusing on love or death. It's easy to lay down one's life. In other words, as the martyrs uh, did in the period of martyrdom, uh, that was heroic and exhilarating. The apostle Paul even died on Nero's chopping block. And we are instructed to take up our cross daily and follow Jesus. But the difficulty lies in doing the little things, facing day by day the petty sacrifices and self-denials which no one notices and no one will ever applaud us for. John 3.16 says, this is how much God loves the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. That's the message version of John 3, 16. Now, John chapter 10, verse 10 says, this is Jesus speaking, he says, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Love means readiness to do anything at any time for other people. Love means a readiness to do anything at any time for others. Romans 5 and 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's the New English, uh, New International Version. Now, we may not have the opportunity to save brothers 
uh, of our lives by dying in their place. But we can, can and should do the next best thing by namely sustaining their life when we have what he needs. When I give to a brother in need what I could use to keep me alive, by that I have followed Jesus' command and his example to, of self-sacrificing love. Our love for God is manifested by obedience to him, but our love for other Christians is manifested by our willingness to sacrifice for them. Now, John's letter has been compared to a spiraling staircase because it keeps returning to the same three topics, love, obedience, and truth. And even though these themes recur, it's not true that they are merely repetitious. Each time we return to a topic, topic, we look at it from a different point of view and are taken more deeply into that topic. Now, we've already learned, uh, and, and if you haven't read uh, 1 John chapter 2 lately, I recommend that you read it. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 7 through 11. And... Uh, the emphasis in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 7 through 11, was fellowship. A believer who is walking in the light will evidence that fact by loving the brethren. In our present section, the emphasis is on his relationship with other believers. Christians love one another because they have all been born of God, which makes them all brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Obedience and love are both evident of sonship and brotherhood. Now, we've been reminded that a true child of God practices righteousness in 1 John chapter 1 uh, third chapter, verse 1 through 10. And now, beginning with verse 11 through verse 24, we uh, shall look into the matter of love for the brethren. This truth is first stated in the negative. It says, Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Now, a striking difference should be noted between the earlier and the present treatment of love for the brethren. In this section on fellowship, uh, back in uh, uh, verses uh, 7 through 11 in chapter 2, we were told that loving the brethren is a matter of light and darkness. And if we do not love one another, we cannot walk in the light, no matter how loud our profession to love each other might be. But this section, uh, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 11 through 24, deals with brotherhood. The epistle probes much deeper into brotherhood. Now, we are told that loving the brethren is a matter of life and death. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. That's 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. Now, when it comes to this matter of love, there are four possible levels of relationship, so to speak, uh, on which a person may live. The first one is murderer, and that's found in verses 11 and 12 of the third chapter of 1 John. The second one is hatred found in verse 13 through 15. And in verse 16 and 17, we find the third one, indifference. But the fourth one is Christian compassion, found in verse 18 through 24. 
The first two are not becoming of a Christian at all. And the third one is less than Christian. Only the last one is compatible with true Christian love. True Christian love is self-giving and not self-getting. That's what we see evident in John 3.16. And on the cross on Calvary, we observe John 3.16 spreading from the Father and then from the Son. What we see in Jesus is where we as believers become children of God by believing in his salvific act. And the Father's love is now spread through Jesus to us and now must be spread through all believers. John uh, chapter 13, verse 35 says, By this all men shall know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And then 1 John chapter 3, verse 17, it reads, But if anyone has the world's good and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? The evidence of genuine love is not verbal profession, but vital performance. Deeds rather than words. You've heard somebody say, talk is cheap. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, uh, Paul makes the statement, if I could speak all the languages of the earth, and call, Paul could speak a multitude of languages, and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Just making a lot of noise. James chapter 2 verse 15 says, If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you say to them, Go in peace, be warm, and feel, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is your love? The major concern of this passage is to encourage obedience and active love from all of those who claim allegiance to Jesus Christ. So the question is, am I content to just say I love you? Or am I required to demonstrate my love by putting it into action? I saw a plaque on somebody's wall in their office uh, uh, once, uh, and it asked the question, how do you know that Jesus loved you? The answer was, he gave his hand to the nails, he gave his feet to the rivet, and he gave his side to the spear. He died on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. For you and me, he died. And in dying, he made us to become sons of God. He died to free us from a sin debt that we owed and could no way pay. And early on the third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Power to cure a sin-sick soul that was leading to death. And I'm out of time now, but I must remind you that he ascended up to the Heavenly Father and he's preparing a place for us and making intercessions for us day by day. And that's a reminder that our sacrificing for each other must be on a day-to-day -day basis because Jesus encouraged, he, he, he admonished us to love one another and to take up our cross daily and follow him. He's coming back to take us to a place where joy 
will never end. Unspeakable joy. And death will be no more. Let's close with another prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping me. Thank you for loving me. And thank you for using me. Now I pray that you would give the increase that all who hear this, these words will participate in the process of putting into practice whatever you command us, that we will become more than hearers, but doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So all that's left for today is to remind you and us to mask up, practice social distancing, and wash your hands often. And with that, I'm out of here until next week. Take care and know that God's mercy and grace will see us through. Take care. Bye-bye.